Cheaper mobile phone charges. Do you find it inconvenient dealing with two currencies? Are you confused by the different income tax and benefits for people living and working on different sides of the border? Well, this is the pitch for a united Ireland in posters displayed in Cross McGlenn and the surrounding area in South Armagh. The debate on a united Ireland is centre stage in the border area where the United Ireland You Decide group are holding a border poll on Saturday the 25th. And they're asking people, should Ireland be reunited? And uh, Emma McArdle is involved in organising all of that. E Emma, why are you doing this? Um, well, we think past that partition has failed. And, um, you know, being someone who has lived all their lives in the border area, uh, we can see, our group can see, how partition is failing the people here. Um, I suppose what really spurred me on to create this group was the fact that I have a, a baby son. He's seven months old and um, you know, half his family, family lives on the northern half of the border and half his family live in the south. And I don't want him to have to pick a side, as it were, mm. when he's growing up. You know, I don't ever want him to stay, say to me, you know, what, am I a Nordy? Am I a stater? I don't want him to have to do that. Now, what would be the practical advantages, in your view, of the border being removed? Well, I suppose the main, um, the main advantage would be from an economic and a business point of view. Like, before partition, the Newry and Dundalk area was one hinterland. Partition came along and it was decided, you know, by people in Westminster and Whitehall who ha had never stood here, who had never experience living here who didn't really care about the impact on this area and um, you know partition came along and split that area in two and it pitted Dundalk against Newry and Newry against Dundalk and that that still is the case today you can see fluctuations in the economy on one side or the other of the border which mm. will drive people either to Newry or to Dundalk for 10 years and it swings and roundabouts it's impossible for local businesses to plan in that type All of right. climate where, where have, they don't know. You have currency happen. variations, and we'll come to that in mm -hmm. a moment. Sometimes it favours uh, the pound and sometimes it favours uh, the euro exactly. in terms of business. And there's duplication of services like the health service, the, the civil service, uh, fire and rescue and police and all of those things. Yeah, and um, there's huge waste in that. Sure, sure, but you know that the Northern Ireland economy is largely supported by public service jobs. Mm -hmm. um, if they were to go because of rationalisation, what would happen to the economy? economy in the local area? Well, you know, I'm not an economist, but I think that the public sector in the north is... Um, it's huge. It, 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 it is, I agree, it's strong, and that's at the expense of the private sector. You know, if we had more investment in a private sector and a strong local local industry, that would be much preferable mm. to rely on the state. Now, now I don't know where or when your aspiration is for, because at the moment, as you know, we're in the Euro in the south here, mm -hmm. and Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom of Britain and Northern Ireland is in the Stirling area. That's right. That would have to be dismantled, wouldn't it, before any thought of a united Ireland could come along? Well, yeah, it would. That but what, what we're doing is starting the debate. You know, the, the Good Friday Agreement is 15 years old, and it, there's a provision in it for a border poll, but it's reliant on the British Secretary of State to call that. Um, and I don't, think, uh, I don't think she's going to start the conversation. Mm. I don't think the debate will be initiated yeah. there. So it's going to be up to people to demand for that to happen. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how they would uh, resolve it in, in the currency business, uh, we may get a template for that when Scotland has its referendum and if it decides that it wants out of uh, the uh, United Kingdom. Yeah. Emma, there are two things about uh, your poll. One is the, the Spotlight poll, um, which was published in February of this year, showed that 38% of Catholics in Northern Ireland, now not just in the border area, but generally speaking, 38% mm -hmm. of Catholics in Northern Ireland would choose to stay in the Commonwealth, 35% would rather join with uh, the Republic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this border poll that you're having, I mean, unless you get a really representative sample rather than a self-selecting sample, will be pretty meaningless, won't it? Well, you know, Pat, there's polls, every couple of years there's polls on this, that and the other, and there have been many polls. They're all saying, you know, leave things as they are. If you want to challenge the status quo, that's going to be, to a certain amount, divisive. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are having an inclusive campaign here. We don't want to stoke up any tension or anything like that. 
No, we'll but talk be, be, because to everyone, it, we want to include everyone. But back be, to your it is self select point. It is self selecting. I mean, only yeah, the well, people. Well, what yeah. I'll say is this um, the census figures show that there is a population of approximately 3,000 people in this area. Um, and as part of this campaign, you know, we have created a new electoral register of people who wish to be included. And at the moment, we have, I think it's about 2,500 people who have said, yes, I want to be included in this. So, you know, that's a pretty representative sample of the, group, of the area that we live in. Um, and if other areas want to do the same thing and have different yeah. results or a different campaign, we would welcome and that. Do you know how representative it is in terms, uh, your electoral register, in terms of the political affiliations of, of those who have registered? Because if it's all from one side uh, or not proportionately no. according to the sizes of the different populations. No, look, look, we have visited, um, we have canvassed every house a minimum of three times. We have made every effort. We have opened a small office. We have uh, put our contact details in the public domain. People who want to get on the register have lots of ways that they can do that. And no, we have not broken it down by any kind of political affiliation. I don't care what people's political opinion really is. You know, I want everyone to be included okay. in this. And there we have to leave it. Emma McGardle, Chairperson of United Ireland Youth Group.